Good evening to all. I'm going to take the liberty tonight to ask those that came from top to the bottom seats to do so on your own tomorrow night, one more night for the gospel. It's good to stay close. It's good to pay attention because that is one of the, that is the most serious decision that a person will make in his or her life, regardless of what age. I look to the Lord to give me something that I can bring young people into it, that I can bring middle-aged people into it, and that I can bring older people into it. But also, I wanted something as I was looking to him to give me something that includes all men and women alike. And I trust that you will follow my theme because I'm going to read some scriptures, few verses, and I'm going to start from the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes that comes after Proverbs. And I want to start reading from chapter 9. And I'm sure you will catch the theme as I will go through see some verses. I want to read verse 14. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city Yet no man remembered, yet no man remembered that same poor man. Just turn the page to chapter 11 and verse 9. Rejoice, O young men, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee. In the ways of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Remember now the Creator, in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Turn with me now to the New Testament, to the Gospel of Luke. Three more verses. And chapter 16. And I would read only one verse. And verse 25, and Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy things, but now he is comforted, that is Lazarus, and thou art tormented. He is comforted, but thou art tormented. Turn the page to chapter 17. And verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. And the last verse is chapter 23. And verses 42 and 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise and thus far.
We have been together, as we have heard, approximately five nights this night. And uh, tonight I was led by the help of the Lord to speak about something to remember. And when the scripture tells us to remember, he is telling me not to forget. I wonder if I ask question tonight, what do you remember about the first message if you were with us the whole week? What do you remember about the first message? And if I ask you, what do you remember on, from the second message and the third and the fourth? I wonder to myself, how many of us will be able to tell me what was the gospel message about? So I felt before the Lord, it will be very good for all of us to have a message from the scripture, not from any man, to impress upon me to remember certain things that God wants me to remember in the present time before it is too late. Because all these verses were read is simply to lead you from whatever circumstances you might be in. I don't know what you are thinking. I don't know what you do. I don't know where you have been. All these things that might occupy the hearts of man, nobody knows it except God himself. So probably sometimes we think that I can fool my brethren, I can fool my parents, I can fool my father, I can fool my mother, I can fool everybody, and that is true. You might be that smart to be able to fool everyone, but one blessed person you can never fool, and that is God himself. So I want to speak to you tonight in a very quick word about you being a young man. And the scripture speaks much about the young men in the Bible because they like to do their own things. That's why the one that wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, as far as the scriptures is concerned, he was the wisest man on earth beside the Lord Jesus when he came in manhood. And he is telling the young man because he's been a young man, because he was a person that was overtaken with everything that he desired in life. He wanted palaces, he wanted cars, well, I'm just making an example. He wanted whatever he wants to. He wanted the Nintendo, he wanted Xbox, Z-Box, whatever box you want, he had it. You know why? Because he was the richest man in the world, and every time, everyone in the present time is thinking, how could I be so rich? How could I be the Bill Gates of this world? Because in obtaining all this money, I can do whatever I want to do. And uh, this is Solomon encouraging the young man, if you are thinking this way, you go ahead, do it. Go after the thinking of your heart. Go and in your own ways. Go whatever your eyes would desire, go after it. And you know what? We have been saying it for four nights. Nobody knows what will happen the next day. But if this is all what you are occupied with, is I want to do whatever I want to do. Nobody, there is no one's going to tell me what to do. That's the wisest man. He's telling you, listen, I've been a young man. I've been in your age. I know how we think. I know what we like. I know what we go after. That's what he is telling you. But oh, he brings a word of warning. Because you know what? You can do all these things, but in the Christian era, especially if you are born in a Christian household, from the days of your youth, when you were born even, when you start hearing the word, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and maybe you did not understand the story of love. Maybe you didn't understand all what Christ has done for you and for me. But I am firmly believe that many of you being born in a Christian household, just from a young age, you have heard the name, the Lord Jesus. Somebody one time gave me a card, and he was a Christian fellow, and I was so delighted. But that card reads this way. If you were introduced to my name, and you forgot me, you lose nothing. But if I tell you about the name of the Lord Jesus, and you ignore it, you lose everything. And this is why most of you have been grown in such an environment, the Lord Jesus. Solomon is warning the young men, but I want to bring it to our Christian time. I am warning you as based from the word of God that if this is all what you're thinking of, you are missing the mark. Because God, who is not only a loving God, because I love to dwell upon the love of God, 
It is one of the best themes that I ever enjoy in the Word of God. That for God so loved the world. You know, there is a man that was touched with kindness, the Apostle Paul. When he speaks about history, I tremble. The blasphemer, the persecutor, the one who will go, we have heard about it this week, and try to throw the Christians in prison or even be there when they are being martyred. But this is a man that reached to that verse. He knew that all these things, there was a light that came from heaven, that he saw something of Christ Jesus, and he bowed down to his claim. And he can proclaim in every time we open the scripture, the son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. He was a young man. The scripture tells me that Saul was a young man. You read about it as far as the book of Acts chapter 7. He was a young man. They laid the clothes of Stephen at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul. But this young man came to the understanding that whatever I might do in life, if it is apart from Christ Jesus, I'm going to end up in a path that will re bring me to judgment. It is appointed for man once to die. You're not going to die so many times. You're going to die once. But then you will enter into a second death. You will die once. Are you prepared? I tremble in my knees. When I think when I was unbeliever that I might be face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that has been preaching to me, saints have been telling me about him year after year after year after year, and I'm saying no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. Until the Lord brought that scene of judgment before me that I trembled in my booth, that how am I going to face the one that died for me and I always rejected him. How am I going to face the one that the God unspeakable gift? How am I going to face the one that the scripture tells me about the measure of his love for every and single one of us? How am I going to face such a man? And Solomon is warning the young man and the young girl that, listen, you want to do whatever you want to do? Your parents, you come to an age, they cannot do much, you know. They can advise you. They can tell you, son, daughter, put your act together. That's all we can do after a while. The brethren cannot change you. No one can change you except one blessed person that the scripture tells me he can bring a change. That one soul was touched by the kindness of God when he saw a resurrected man in glory. Because the Lord Jesus did not only go into death for you and for me. He did not only pay the penalty of sin. But he is a living savior that we are presenting before you. One that went into death, but one that has been raised from amongst the dead. Because he is the almighty. He conquered every enemy. And if you're not going to put your trust in such a loving, holy Savior, unfortunately, I tell you, as far as the Scripture is concerned, you will come under judgment. And let me tell you, if you are waiting for that scene of judgment to defend yourself, I understand from the Scripture that every mouth will be shut. Every mouth. We try to defend ourselves now. We try to give ourselves all the excuses we need. Why I don't want the Lord Jesus? Let me wait a tiny bit. So many dreams in front of me. But oh, I want to tell you, the saints that preach the gospel, every single one of you, one of them reminded you that there is no guarantees in life. You know, when it comes to the death, it is the king of terror. It brought people under bondage. And you know, I just want to tell you about the Lord Jesus who went into death to destroy him that has the power of death. He destroyed him. He prepared the way for you. You can join the victorious side. You can join the Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you, I think we are all witnessed, dear saints and dear friends, over the years, whether at Grove City or away from... 
whether in ABC or away from ABC, it doesn't matter. We all can tell stories about loved ones that went to be with the Lord. Forget the age. Because sometimes we think that when it comes to the thought of death, we're talking about a person that's 95 years old and a person that's 100 years old. But let me tell you, as far as I can hear from the news, as far as friends that might call me, as far as I inquired about some people overseas, I have been observing that there is a lot of young people that are taken from the scene. But the problem is, where are they heading? What is their destiny? And for you, you have to make a decision tonight because death will come. But you might say to yourself, you know, okay, I'll take my chances. Can I tell you a story when you take your chances? We believe, those that know Christ as their personal Savior, that the Lord is coming at any moment. He is coming at any moment. It could be now. It could be in a day. It could be in a year. I don't know. Oh, but I will tell you, you refuse Christ Jesus tonight. God is going to bring everything before you. There's coming a time that is called the great tribulation that was never like it. Not from the, when the world began or will come after it. A great tribulation that is something unique about it. You refused the Lord Jesus. You rejected the Lord Jesus. You said to God, I don't need your love. I don't need the riches of your grace. I don't need your mercy. I am okay the way it is. There is coming a day. My dear friend, my dear son, my dear daughter, listen carefully. If you will not accept Christ as your personal Savior even tonight, there is coming a day. Because you have heard about the love of the Savior. You have heard about his death. Maybe time after time, night after night, year after year, meeting after meeting. And you still have the boldness to say no. Oh, if the Lord will come right now and you are left behind. Let me give you a little bit about what might happen to you. Just if the Lord came now and you stayed in your seat. Where's my mother? Where's my father? They're away. They're taken. Why? Because they trusted Christ Jesus as personal Savior. But if you stayed behind, let me just give you a picture, quick picture of what's going to happen. That the Lord Jesus, the one who died because God so loved the world, he's going to pour his judgment upon the earth. That's beside the eternal judgment. That's a foretaste. That's a foretaste. But one of the things that always strikes me, I don't know how cool you are. I don't know you played it cool and you think you're tough and all of the above. It doesn't matter to me. But I know from the scripture it tells me, you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and you stay behind in your seat tonight. There is coming a day where you're going to go to the rocks and to the mountains. Listen to this carefully. And say, cover us from the one that is sitting upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You will be uttering these words if you will reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Something, something greater than this is that in chapter 9 of Revelation... It is said that there will be some that will seek after what? After death. And they will never find it. That you will come to a point in your life that all what is poured upon the earth will make you seek death and it is not there for you. Why? Because you rejected the love of God. The love of God is still available. The grace of God and the riches of his grace is still present. The door of grace is still open. Please come to the Lord Jesus. Please wise up. Because none of us would like to see any of you going under the judgment of God because you are a young person and you have a parent that love you tremendously. And every one of us, as a parent, we want to go to heaven and can declare before God, I and the children whom thou hast given me. That's why you are here in this conference. That's why your parents brought you here. Because if you still didn't make a confession for the Lord Jesus, they want you to do so. They want you to taste the love of God. They want you to see the beauty of the Lord Jesus in all what he has done for you and for me. That's what they want you to do. And as you move forward, the invitation of Solomon, so that you will not come into judgment, remember thy creator in the days of your youth. You remember, 
You know, there were kings in the book of Kings. There were 12 and there were 16 and they were such young individuals that they came and did what is right in the sight of God. God wants you to do the right thing. He wants you to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. It's very simple. It is us that complicate things. God is not asking you to do anything. So that we can move quickly, the invitation is remember, trust your Creator. Because the, the Word of God tells me that He doesn't only want you to know the Lord Jesus as your Creator, He wants you as well to know Him as your Redeemer. And when we talk about Redeemer, it speaks about the, 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 the judgment that Christ has received, the shedding of His blood so that He can secure your soul for heaven eternally. Remember, thy Creator will end up with the wise men. But I read verses from the New Testament. And you'd say, why did you read this, uh, this record in Luke chapter 16? And it says about a man that was rich, have everything that he wants. You know what he had? He had everything he wants but Christ. And you might have everything you want. I don't know what it is. You might have the most beautiful car. You might have the best records. I don't know much technology, but you might have the best of what you want. But the only important person that you need to have, you don't. And the Lord, the Creator, I said, remember your Creator. The Creator has the right to call your name even tonight. Remember your Creator. But the Creator came to this man and he said, fool. <laughs> he said to another man, but I'm going to use it there. Your soul will be required of you tonight. Just like that. You think God has the right to do so? Every right. The Lord Jesus has every right. Today, your soul shall be required of you. And this guy recognized it was too late. But why do you think I read this? Just to scare you? No. I just want to bring the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, but also that God said, if you will not accept my love, if you will not accept my grace, if you will not accept my mercy, there is a judgment. It was said about this man, he looked above, and he can see Lazarus sitting on the bosom of Abraham. Why do I bring this story because I want you to understand one thing. That one of the things I believe, unbelievers, those that have rejected the Lord Jesus, and when they are cast into the lake of fire, and when they are judged by the one who loved all mankind, but they rejected him, you ever remembered in the Bible when you were young in the Sunday school, you have heard something about hell where the gnashing of teeth is? Do you know why the gnashing of teeth? You're going to be beholding. Let's just say we are here. How many are we? 400 something. So we are a number here. And the message and the proclamation of the gospel went out to you. But you have said no Monday. And you have said no. You have no, said no Sunday. And you have said no Monday. And you have said no Tuesday. And you have said no Wednesday. And perhaps you would say no Thursday. I don't know. I hope that you will say yes. And the Lord will take your soul from this scene. You know what's going to happen to a lot of people? I certainly believe that's their eternal portion. Beside their tormentation, beside what he expressed that I'm being tormented here, they're going to be looking to heaven. And that's why we tell you, my dear child, stay in your seat. I don't care what time you want to come down. I don't care if you want to stay on your seat. Don't worry about what your friends might think. Don't worry about it. Is it cool to come down? Is it cool to sit down? Is it cool to talk about it? How about all my friends? What are they going to say about me? I'm telling you tonight, forget what your friends will say about you. 
Because there will come a point if you would leave the scene, if you would leave earth without the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be looking toward heaven and you will see most of the people you're seeing tonight. Take a look. Take a close look. Take a look at everybody that's here tonight. Those that know Christ will be in heaven. Those that will know Christ will be in the Father's house. But you know, if you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I will assure you from the Word of God, besides being tormented through the endless ages of eternity, you're going to be looking up and you're going to see your mother, your father, your brother, whoever trusted Christ Jesus as your personal Savior in a place of dignity in a place of blessing in the Father's house, in heaven itself, with all the saints. Look around you. If you rejected Christ, you will see them through the endless ages of eternity, and you will be going all these years. You cannot count eternity. What is it, 10,000 years? A billion years? I, it doesn't matter. Can you count years? You cannot. But all eternity, you'll be looking up there, and you are uh, dashing the teeth. Uh, the regret, you will regret that, how come I didn't come to know Christ Jesus? How come I didn't accept his love? How come I refused the grace of God? You will be ever and ever and ever and ever looking up and rejecting how did I reject the Lord Jesus you're regretting every moment of it because the gospel was available for you and you kept saying no not now and the time comes when the Lord Jesus has the door of grace open years after year after year it's been open for 2,000 years when the Christ Jesus died but it comes to the point that even the patience of God runs out He's telling you, come to me and I will give you rest. The door is open. My hands are wide open to receive you. Please come tonight. But there comes a time when you will knock and knock and knock and keep knocking and keep knocking. And the Lord Jesus, this sweet Savior that loved so much. Oh, how much he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave himself. What else could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me that has been trying years after years, occasion after occasion to bring you to him. And he's going to look at you and say, oh boy, I know you're not. Depart, depart from me. It is a day of grace. It is a day of acceptance. Please come to Christ even tonight. He will welcome you with an open arm. He's alive. He conquered death. He will welcome you with his arms even when he's in glory because he loves you still tremendously. And then we read about a woman that, oh, she couldn't let go of this world. She loved this world. You know what? God made a provision for her to escape the judgment that came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And God is making a way of escape for each one of us. But there is a verse that we need to take hold of. How can we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, you're not going to be able to escape it. The only way you can escape it is by trusting the work of the Lord Jesus on Calvary's cross on your behalf. That if you put your trust in him, you would come to the assurance of knowing that my sins are forgiven. There is nothing like the great truth of the forgiveness of sins. For someone to know that my sins so great so many... Christ is willing to forgive each and every one of them. Nothing like this truth, at least to my own soul. To know that I've been forgiven. And you know, he gave me that example that, you know what? If you, because you love the world and the things of this world, and you are all overwhelmed with all what the world will offer you, that pleasure for a season. You know what? I heard it through a reading a couple of years ago. It is the Lord has endless ages of eternity. And when the Lord Jesus comes, because he's going to come and he's going to rule supreme in this world. You know why he's going to come? Because he's been raised. And the thief understood this. And he says, remember me when thou shalt come in thy kingdom. And let me tell you the answer of a loving Savior. He says, when? Tomorrow? Ten years from now? Ten thousand years you shall be? Today, thou will be with me. In paradise. This is the kind of loving Savior we're trying to present. Remember this. Don't be like this woman that she looked back because she wanted all the pleasures of this world. 
The thief understood, you know what, I always say it, and I said it to some brethren I was visiting with, the thief is the best example that there is no other way to God but Christ Jesus. The thief is the perfect example on that cross that you cannot win heaven by works because that thief had no good works. The thief is the only one that can tell you every other religion that you hear about in this world does not work as far as salvation is concerned because that thief that got saved on Calvary's cross not on Calvary's cross, on his own cross, when he met the Lord Jesus, had nothing to do with any other religion, but the grace of God has opened the door for him because he knew something about the love of the Lord Jesus, even when he was on the cross, that he can say, remember me when thou shalt come in thy kingdom. So I set the example, when the Lord Jesus shall come in his kingdom, how many years he's going to rule? Maybe a young person can tell me how many years the Lord Jesus is going to reign on earth. Okay, we don't have time. I'm going to say a thousand years. But you know what? When Satan took the Lord Jesus to tempt him, and he brought him to the pinnacle of the world, pinnacle of the universe, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment. Let me tell you, it is a moment compared to eternity. It is a moment, everything that the world is prepared to offer for you. Wise up. Be like Solomon. Solomon. It is a moment, but when it comes to the endless ages of eternity, by putting my trust in the one who loved me and gave himself for me, by him, by me trusting that he died and he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and he has done such a great work for me, for me. That's the beauty of it. It is not only for us, which is true. It is not only he's available for the whole world. You know, he is so great that if every person that was born in this universe will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus, every person will be saved. That's how great is the Lord Jesus. That's how great is the Lord Jesus. Are you prepared to come? Are you prepared to tell the Lord Jesus, remember me? And I'm going to assure you from the word of God, these words will echo in your own ears. Today, you are mine. Today, you are mine. But you have to respond and say yes to Christ to give you a way of escape from this horrible judgment that is coming. You have to say yes. Don't worry about your friends, because you still remember what I told you? If you're worried about the peer pressure, you're going to look up one day and see, well, these are my friends. How come they distracted me? And young people, those that know Christ as a personal Savior tonight, I'm going to be the police of how you're going to come out. And when you come out, go in your section, don't cross, don't go back and forth. Go out quietly because I need to finish early or else most of you will stone me if you were late for the ice cream. God forbid. But you have to make a decision tonight. So as most of you know, I like to end up in a couple of choruses. I have a dear brother by the name of Pimad. He loves these two choruses. So I would like to just finish with them without piano. And then we're going to pray, and then you have to leave very, very quietly. And I'm going to ask kindly, in a gracious way, that we start with the extreme left and extreme right, the two aisles to start going out in the doors next to them, and then the next aisle will start following. And please leave very, very quietly. And for you, my dear child, my dear daughter, young man, older man, Young woman, older woman. I read about different ages, different gender. They all were an example for you and for me. In some cases, not to be like Lot's wife, not to be like this rich man, because God loved me. And the measure of God's love, he has given his son for you. And whoever wants to talk, and young, very young child, if you want to talk to your mother and father, God bless, you can talk with them. 
If you have a desire to stay behind, to stay in your seat, to come down, it doesn't matter. It's the liberty you prefer, you like. But talk to somebody. Don't leave. I'm telling you, it's a serious matter. I don't want you one day to look from hell and look up and see all these faces that came together in 2023 to EBC, enjoying heaven, because that will occur. If this man was looking at Lazarus, he knew who Lazarus was. He knew who Abraham was. He knew everybody who it was. That's their portion if you will not come to Christ. Don't worry about your friend. Let your friend go. And young ones, because you know Christ as your personal Savior, please don't distract the next person next to you. Go out quietly because you don't want the time for a person to stand before the judgment seat or the throne of Christ and look and behold and see you saved in heaven and say, oh, why did you distract me? Oh, how come you didn't tell me? If you know it was that serious, how come you didn't tell me? So we're going to close with these two choruses. The first one is going to always be into my heart. We're going to sing it twice, softly. And uh, if uh, for many of you, into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And if you are prepared to say yes to Christ Jesus, I also want you to be thankful for it. So the last chorus we're going to sing without the pen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. What's the rest? Does anybody know? Thy great salvation, so great, so free. You could tell I'm getting old and forgetful, but you guys could remember. Okay, so let's sing that chorus, and then we'll close in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, there is no one in the whole world that could love any soul like thy love for them. Thou hast loved us all to the measure that thou will go all the way to the cross and pay for the penalty of sin and for those that will trust thee for their sins eternally. Thou didst pay it, Lord Jesus. Thou didst cry, it is finished. We pray that whatever is uttered by the help of the Spirit of God will leave an impression upon every person that up to now did not commit his or her life to thee, that thou will draw them to thyself. For thou art so attractive, Lord Jesus, because of all what love has done. We commit every soul to thyself. We pray that every soul will have the courage to be able to stay behind and to know the love of the Savior. And if someone is struggling with the assurance of their faith, they can do the same. We commit ourselves to thee and we bless thy holy name. Amen.